Hello, welcome to this DSE training course. The lessons ahead of you will help you to understand how constant use of DSE technology can pose risks to the health and safety of team members and will present ways to mitigate this. In this lesson, we will explore the nature of DSE itself and how risk assessments can be easily arranged for users. So let's get started. Before we start, we'll just clarify what DSE actually stands for. It is simply an acronym for display screen equipment. The term is commonly used to refer to devices with an alphanumeric or graphic display screen. Technology has advanced significantly in recent years, which means that they can vary greatly in size and operation. Older equipment may sometimes be referred to as VDUs or visual display units. The type of DSE used by people at work can be very broad, ranging mostly from computer monitors to laptops. However, it is generally accepted that those who spend long hours positioned in front of DSE are those most at risk from health or safety issues. This collective of DSE users would include roles such as secretaries or typists, call center operators, journalists or reporters, authors, content writers, graphic designers, and so on. The UK's Health and Safety Executive, HSE, specifies that users are more at risk if they use DSE on a daily basis. Formerly known as DSE users, their routine will consist of regular sessions of more than an hour or so at a time. Those who work at screens infrequently or for short periods are considered to be at much less risk and need not consider preventive health measures to any great extent. If a team member has been identified as a prolific DSE user, they must be made aware of health risks and safe practices. Ideally, this should be given to them in the form of training, which emphasizes such factors as recognizing potential hazards from spending long hours on DSE work, adjusting furniture for maximum physical comfort, organizing a workstation to prevent repetitive or harmful movements, maintaining equipment with straining muscles, knowing their local health and safety representative. The UK has the Health and Safety Display Screen Equipment Regulations 1992 in place to ensure that employers take responsibility for their workers who use DSE. This means they are legally obliged to provide sufficient training to users, enabling them to proactively identify hazards and request the appropriate steps to mitigate them. DSE usage can involve long hours sitting in front of a monitor and keyboard, seated with a laptop, or scrutinizing data on a smartphone. The important thing to remember is that incorrect or inappropriate usage during this time could lead to eye fatigue, muscle injuries, and upper body pain. This is why an employer must ensure their DSE users actualize these five important steps. Do a DSE workstation assessment, act to minimize identified risks, take breaks from DSE work and do something different, take an eye exam if they think they need one, and take offered training and read available information. Following the global pandemic of 2020 and technological advances, it has become far more common for people to work from home, even in regional companies. However, an employer must acknowledge that the same health risks regarding DSE exist there as they do in the office. There is no real physical difference in spending numerous hours in front of a work monitor when compared to the same activity performed in suburban surroundings. We've already referred to this task, but a DSE assessment is one of the most important elements of DSE training. It is the formal evaluation of the risks directly associated with using any type of DSE at work and is considered mandatory for anyone who regularly works with display screens. The assessment should examine how the screen and accompanying equipment are used in practice. Some companies may alternatively refer to them as workstation assessments. 
when a DSC assessment takes place, it should never be restricted to just the display screen, but also focus on other essential items that will be used in conjunction with it by the user. This will automatically include an examination of such objects as keyboard, mouse, laptop, tablet or iPad, smartphone, software, work furniture. The immediate environment, such as lighting and temperature, should also be considered for its effect on the user. As we have already mentioned, a DSC assessment is a lawful requirement that must be arranged or enabled by an employer. This will ensure that a workstation is conducive to expected performance levels and also protect a user's health and well-being. It is considered critical to hold a DSE assessment on at least an annual basis, with the understanding that any environmental changes should also instigate one. When performing an assessment, an assessor must adopt an effective format that will result in a best outcome. This means that a report should be produced leading the assessor and the user to work together to deal with the most serious issues first, analyze all reported aches, pains and negative symptoms from users, discover the origins and causes of all identified risks, examine recent changes or tasks that may contribute to hazards, take into account a user's special needs or disability. An assessment should not consist of simply looking at a workstation and moving a few items according to initial conclusions. The assessor should be given enough time to talk with the user about their working experiences. An observation exercise should also be there to observe the user's posture and actions during work routines. The nature of their work and the immediate surroundings should be additional factors affecting the assessment. The person chosen to perform the DSE assessments should be deemed competent and capable of analysing the available data to reach the appropriate conclusions. They must also be empowered to act on their findings and make the necessary changes. Some companies will provide external or on-site training for potential assessors. Each one should know how to review existing assessments and user input to identify resolutions, deal with problems or issues that the user has been unable to solve, perform additional research or gain resources according to their findings, produce a final report on their findings and progress the necessary administration. When formally designated in the role, a DSE assessor will hold several responsibilities that must be fulfilled. The primary one is to ensure that the use of DSE does not pose a risk to any employees. In addition to this, they must also provide training for new DSEs, enable access to eyesight testing, and periodically review any control measures that have been put in place after an assessment. A DSE assessor is expected to have procedures that will trigger an assessment when significant environmental changes occur. This could include updates to existing software, new equipment in the workstation, different workstation furniture, revised schedules or working hours, workstation being moved to a new floor or site. That completes this first lesson, where we have covered the definition of DSE and its potential risks to users. We have also explained the requirements and principles of a DSE assessment. In the next lesson, we will focus on ways to safely use DSE in any environment to a much greater level. So stay with us and we'll see you soon.